All right, guys, um, now that we're done with limits, we are going to start looking at derivatives. So derivatives are a rate of change. So rates of change play a role uh, whenever we study the relationship between two changing quantities, so two variables. Uh, a familiar example is going to be velocity, which is the rate of change of position with respect to time. Okay, so um, the average velocity is something that you've probably thought about, even if you didn't realize you were thinking about it. Um, so if you're driving somewhere and the place that you're traveling is 200 miles away and it takes you four hours to get there, then the average velocity you were going um, is 50 miles per hour, 200 change in position divided by four change in time to get you 50 miles an hour. Okay, now, of course, if you're making that trip, you averaged 50 miles per hour, but that doesn't mean you were going exactly 50 miles per hour at every moment in time along that four-hour trip. Okay, you may be going faster at some point. If you get on a highway, you may be going slower. Maybe you had to stop at a red light or something, or you hit one of those small towns where they go down to 35 miles an hour. So um, your speed fluctuates over time, but it averages out to this 50 miles per hour. So in calculus, what we want to be able to do is um, find the instantaneous velocity. What, how fast were you going at a specific moment in time? Okay, and this is um, impossible to do with our average value formula up here. See, we have this difference quotient, um, S2 minus S1 over T2 minus T1. Well, if you did it at an instantaneous time, um, your Ts would be like one second minus one second, one minus one. And then we would be dividing by zero, which we obviously know we're not allowed to do. Okay, so instead, what we have to do is we have to estimate the instantaneous velocity. All right, and so we can compute an average velocity over a very, very, very small interval, like 1.01 .01 minus 1. So the change in time is a very, very small um, interval there. Okay, so, and then we can make those intervals smaller and smaller. So I can do 1.001 minus 1, 1. 1.0001 minus 1, and just get closer and closer and closer until eventually we approach zero on that denominator there. Okay, so I'm hoping that I use that word approach and that starts making you think of something we just covered, determine the limit of the average velocity. Okay, so a derivative is a version of a limit as we will see in a second. All right, so if we look at this graph of um, the position S of t over time, um, drawn through the points at t1, S of t1. So I'm going to label these here. So this is t1, and this is S of t1. And then this is t2 and S of t2. All right, and if I draw a secant line through those, it's just connecting those two points with a line. That's called a secant line. Um, any line that passes through a curve like this at two and intersects at two different points is a secant line. Um, so the slope of that line is the average velocity of this of this point. So like this would be t equals um, one maybe, and this is t equals five. Um, and then this could be like t equals, or s of t equals um, 100 and s of t equals uh, 300. All right. All right, and I'm just made up those numbers so it would match up with 200 divided by four, um, but there you go. All right, and so what we wanna do is basically take this second point that we're calculating at and just start moving it closer. Maybe make it there at four, there at three, there at two, 1.5, 1.01, 1.001. So get closer and closer and closer. And you're drawing a secant line every time. So you have that secant line there, and then you have this secant line there. And you're not going to be able to tell that I'm drawing new lines each time. But each time you draw on a secant line, draw on a secant line, and you're finding the slope, finding the slope, finding the slope. And as you make that limit of this uh, delta t go to zero, then what you're finding is the slope of a tangent line. So at t equals one right here, if we draw a line that looks like this, that's a tangent line. Okay, and so a tangent line intersects a curve at one point. It is usually gonna be outside the curve, but there are instances where a tangent line could pass through a curve um, in certain scenarios. 
but it's going to intersect at only one point, whereas a secant line intersects the curve in two points. Okay, and this slope, whatever the slope of that tangent line is, that is the instantaneous velocity. So at t equals 1, for instance, we could have been traveling 70 miles per hour, although this uh, my slope here looks like it's a little less. So if my original secant line was 50 uh, miles per hour, this one might be 20 miles per hour or something like that. All right, so this down here is just um, changing out the velocity and position for uh, just regular math terms. So velocity is a specific example, one that you're kind of familiar with already, but you can do this um, idea of instantaneous rate of change with just regular functions that aren't related to velocity. Okay, and so this would be the change in y divided by the change in x. You're familiar with that from algebra one when you did slopes. Um, instantaneous rate of change would be taking those average rates of change and making them making x2 get closer and closer and closer to x1. Um, and then translating into function notation here, this is called a difference quotient. You'll be asked to do a difference quotient a lot. You'll see it's a quotient because there's a division sign and it's a difference because there's a minus sign. So it's right there in the name for you. Okay, so the instantaneous rate of change is called its derivative. Okay, rate of change, remember, is slope. So anytime you see the word derivative, you should be thinking about slope. Derivative means slope. Derivative means rate of change. All right, so this is the official definition of derivative. The limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Hey, I like to draw a little picture of this because that formula kind of seems to come out of nowhere if you aren't thinking of it visually. All right, so we have an x value and we have an f of x value. I'm going to put a point there. Okay, then there's some other point out here, and you have a function going between those. Okay, so that point has a value here and has a value here. Okay, so what we were doing on the previous page is we were labeling them like this was x1, this is x2. So now instead what we're going to do is we're going to say that this distance in between these two points is h. So this is a distance of h. So this point right here is x plus h. And this point up here is f of x plus h. And so what we're doing is we're finding the slope between these two points. So if I were to connect these with a secant line like that, the slope would be y2 minus y1, f of x plus h minus f of x, and then x2 minus x1, let's write out the work there, x plus h minus x, the x's do, will cancel out, and you're left with h, and that's what the denominator is. So this is x2 minus x1, which reduces down. So that's where that comes from. It's just the slope of the secant line, and then what we're doing is we're letting h approach zero. So that's going to make this distance smaller and smaller. So we're taking this point right here, we're moving it closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer until eventually the distance between them is zero and we're finding the instantaneous rate of change at that point right there. Okay, second way that you can do this is called the alternative form of the definition of derivative. So why do we have two versions? Um, they're kind of interchangeable, but there are specific times where it's better to use one versus the other. So anytime you want to find the derivative function, f prime of x, that prime symbol means derivative, uh, you want to use the official definition of derivative in that case. So if I gave you f of x is equal to x squared plus 2, and I wanted you to find f prime of x is equal to 2x, then you would want to use this definition of derivative for that. All right, this one down here is um, f prime of c, where c is a real number. c is a real number. Um, constant. All right, so this wants you to find the derivative at a point. So if I said f of x is equal to x squared plus 2, and I wanted you to find f prime of 2, then you would say f prime of x is equal to 2x, and then f prime of 2 is equal to 2 times 2, which is equal to 4. 
So I'm asking you here to find a value for. Up here, I'm asking you to find a function 2x. So those are the best times to use the different versions. Uh, but again, they are sort of interchangeable. So you can use you can use the official definition to find this f prime of c as well. Um, this one doesn't work quite as well as finding the function, but they you could use either one. It's good to know both because they both have their moments where you need to know what they are. Okay, so if we draw a picture of this, sorry, let me get my black back out here. There we go. All right, so we have our x and we have our f of x. And then we have our other point and our other point. All right, but now we, we don't have this H in here, so we're not talking about a distance here. So this is C. And then this is F of C. All right, and then we're finding the slope between those two points. All right, and so um, normally I would say we would do Y2 minus Y1, so F of C minus F of X, and then C minus X, but it doesn't matter what order you do it in. So we're just taking the first point on the left here, f of x minus f of c, and then x minus c. As long as you do them in the same order for both, you're good to go. And then we're letting um, x approach c. So it's like we're taking this x value and we're making it closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer until eventually we're finding the instantaneous, the slope of the tangent line at this point right here. All right, let's put all of this, these words into practice and do a problem. A diver jumps from a diving board that is 32 feet above the water. The position of the diver from the water is given by this function, where t is measured in seconds. Graph this on your graphing calculator and sketch the result below. All right. I, I'm just going to graph it for you here. 32 is our y-intercept, because that's um, how where we start from. Also, you can see the y-intercept right here in the function. And then uh, it's a upside-down parabola because it's a uh, concave down with the negative in front. And so it goes up a little bit from there, and then it comes down. It's going to hit right here. And this is at t equals 2. This is our t, and this is our s of t. If we label our axes there. All right, so it says find the average velocity at which the diver is moving for the interval from 1 to 1.5. All right, so this is going to be s of 1.5 minus s of 1 over 1.5 minus 1. Okay, I was trying to avoid using the calculator, but I am going to need it for this part. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up here. So let me start a new document, add the graph. All right, negative 16x squared. You have to use x in this calculator. Plus 16x plus 32. All right, and it goes way up there, so I'm going to change my window settings, menu, window, number one, um, x min, I really only need 0 to 5, and then y min, I just need 0, and then so 32, but it goes up a little more, so let's do, we'll do 50. And actually, I'm going to change these zeros to negative ones just so I have a little bit of room on the left and underneath. All right, perfect. So there's that graph. Like I said, this is at x equals 2. Um, if you don't trust me there, we can find it. Uh, menu, analyze graph, 0. Click and click. There's our point, 2, 0. There's our 32, and then we have a maximum up here somewhere. All right, so I'm going to add a new page, control doc, and just a regular calculator page. I'm going to hit control divided by to get a fraction template, and then we're going to type this in just like that. Um, and since we graph this, this function is called F1. So when you go to other pages in your document, you can refer back to F1. It's saved in there. So if you type F1, you see it turned bold. That means the calculator recognizes it put parentheses and then type in whatever number you want. So we want to do 1.5 and then minus F1 of 1. And then on the bottom, we want to do 1.5 minus 1. Just like that, hit enter. There's our answer, negative 24. All right, um, since we are doing a real world problem here, let's do um, some units. So T was in seconds, we can label that here, and S of T uh, feet. 
So this was S on top, that's feet, and this was T on bottom, that's seconds. So the average velocity is negative 24 feet per second. All right, now it wants us to compute all of these average velocities. Okay, I hate how this table is set up. It's uh, supposed to be like a limit table where we see how they're approaching, and I like it to be in the middle. So in the middle, we basically want it to be T equals one exactly, where it's one and one. So where the, the distance between the two points is zero, that's the limit. Um, so this, this one is a lot closer. It's a smaller interval than this one is. These are supposed to be flipped. So I'm gonna flip them here. Uh, one comma 1.001. And then over here, I'm going to do 1 comma 1.1. And I'm just going to cross these out. The one in the middle is still good. So now they're going to be approaching whatever value we see they're approaching in the middle here is going to be our answer that we're looking for. All right, so we just need to kind of recreate this fraction here and just change out some values. So we're going to do um, 0.9. I'm going to do that down here as well. And um, you'll notice that I'm, kind of, I'm doing it in a different order here. I'm doing the first one first and the second point second. And like I said up here, that doesn't matter uh, what order, as long as you match it as the same. So I have my point nines in the first spot and the ones in the second spot. Negative 14.4. So I'm going to write that here. All right, just arrow up and hit enter, and you're copying that down and just adding another nine in here. Oops, nine, nine, negative 15.84. And one more time to add another nine in there. Negative 15.984. All right, then I'm going to start over here on the right and do 1.1. 1. 1. Same thing down here. Negative 17.6. And then 1.01. 1. 1. Negative 16.16. And one more time, one more zero in there. Negative 16.016. All right, so use your answers to part B to estimate, oh, that's supposed to say part C, I believe to estimate the instantaneous rate of change, which is the instantaneous velocity at which the diver is moving at t equals one. So what are these average velocities approaching from the left and the right? All right, well, to me, it looks like it's approaching negative 16 feet per second. So that's doing a limit, right? We're finding that numerically, approaching, seeing where it approaches. If we, if we did even more decimal places, we would see it get even closer and even closer. And eventually it would uh, round to exactly negative 16. And that's what we're, what we're looking at. All right, so now we're gonna get out of the velocity world and just do a, a regular old math function here. So f of x is equal to x squared minus four x. Sketch the function and the tangent line to the graph at the point where x is equal to three. All right, so I am going to factor this x times x minus four. So I have zeros at x equals zero and x equals four. Uh, and then I'm just gonna plug in numbers, all the numbers in between. So if we plug in one, I get one minus four. So that's negative three. If I plug in two, I get four minus eight. So that's negative four. And if I plug in three, I get nine minus 12. So that's negative three. And I know it's a parabola because it's x squared. So there we go. Draw a tangent line to the graph where x equals three. So that's this point right here. Draw in a tangent line like that. All right, based on your sketch, do you expect f prime of three to be positive or negative? So remember, f prime of three is the slope of the tangent line. 
because it's a derivative. Derivative is slope, and it's the slope of the tangent line. Well, the tangent line we just drew in is has a positive slope, so I expect my answer to be positive. All right, compute f prime of three, three different ways. So we are going to use the definition of derivative, we're going to use the alternative form of the definition of derivative, and then we're going to use the shortcut that we learned in calculus last year. All right, so f prime of 3 is equal to, actually, I'm going to do this. If we're doing number 1, I'm not going to do f prime of 3. I'm going to be finding f prime of x first. All right, so this is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay, so now we're going to apply that to our function. Limit as h approaches 0 of x plus h squared minus 4 times x plus h minus x squared minus 4x all over h. So f of x plus h means you have to plug in x plus h to the function. x plus h squared minus 4 times x plus h. And then minus f of x just means minus this whole function. So make sure you use parentheses because that minus does have to distribute to both terms. All right, calculus part's over. Now we're just doing a bunch of algebra until we figure out what the answer is. All right, so limit as h approaches 0. So multiply that out, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Distribute minus 4x minus 4h. Distribute minus x squared plus 4x all over h. All right, so the problem right now is that if we were to plug in 0 for h, we would get 0 over 0. Okay, if I go back to the original, plug in 0 for h, you get f of x minus f of x. 0 on top, 0 on bottom. Okay, and until we can divide this h out of the problem completely, we are still going to be in that 0 over 0 form. Okay, so what should happen after you've multiplied everything out is anything that does not have an h attached to it should cancel out. So this x squared, no h attached, there should be a negative x squared somewhere to cancel that out, and there is over here. This, uh, these, that has an h, so it's gonna stay. This has an h, that's gonna stay here, negative 4x. So there should be a positive 4x somewhere to cancel that out, because it doesn't have an h attached to it, and there is over here. All right, so now we have the limit as h approaches zero of 2xh, plus h squared minus 4h all over h. Okay, so now that everything on top has an h, we can just divide everything by the h on the bottom. So this would be the limit. Picking a color here. The limit as h approaches 0. So 2xh divided by h is 2x. h squared divided by h is h. Negative 4h divided by h is negative 4. And then the last step is to just plug in 0 for h. We no longer have a 0 over 0 situation, so you just plug it in. That's going to 0 out that middle right there and leave us with 2x minus 4. So that's f prime of x. And then we were asked to find f prime of 3. So that would be 2 times 3 minus 4. 6 minus 4 is 2. That's a positive number when we expected our answer to be positive. All right. Second method, use the alternative form of the definition of derivative. So that's going to be f prime of 3 All right, so we're finding f prime of 3 using the alternative form of the definition of derivative. So this is the limit as x approaches c, but we have a number now for c. c is 3. So as x approaches 3, of f of x minus f of 3 over x minus 3. All right, so now we're just going to plug in what we know. x limit as x approaches 3. f of x is x squared minus 4x minus f of 3. We actually already know that. f of 3 is negative 3. That's the y value there. And so it's minus negative 3 um, and over x minus 3. Okay, let's uh, just turn that into a plus the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 4x plus 3 
over x minus 3. And so, um, again, if we plug in 3 here, I can go back to the original. If I plug in 3, I get f of 3 minus f of 3, which is 0. And if I plug in 3, I get 3 minus 3, which is 0. So it's a 0 over 0, which always means we have a little bit more work to do. All right, so our work here is going to be to factor the limit as x approaches 3 of x minus 3 times x minus 1 over x minus 3. The x minus 3s are going to cancel out, and then you can plug in 3. 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. And that's the same answer we got over here. You can see how this is a little bit more direct route. We have less work to do for sure, less algebra that we had to go through. So that's why I always recommend using the alternative form if you're finding a derivative at a specific point. Whereas over here, we got the derivative function, f prime of x is equal to 2x minus 4. So if you're asked to find the function of a derivative um, using this. Now, of course, we, we will have the shortcuts that we'll use most of the time. But if you um, are ever having to do this long way, those are my suggestions there. So um, the third way was to use the trick. So those of y'all who were in AB last year already know this, but if you didn't take AB, the, this is called the power rule. So the way you do this is you take x squared and you take the exponent and you put it in front. So this is gonna be two x, and then you subtract one from the exponent. So f of x, I'm just writing down the function here, x squared minus four x f prime of x is equal to, multiply by the exponent, 2, x, and then subtract 1 from the exponent, x to the 2 minus 1. So here you multiply by the exponent, 1. So, And if there's a coefficient in front here, you just multiply that number. So it's negative 4 times 1, and then x to the 1 minus 1. All right, so this is just 2x to the first power, and this is just minus 4 because 1 minus 1 is 0, and x to the 0 power is 1. So it's negative 4 times 1, which is negative 4. And that's what we got up here, 2x minus 4. And then you plug in 3, 2 times 3 minus 4, which is equal to 2. And that's, of course, the best way to do it, fastest, uh, most efficient way. And once we have learned all of our derivative rules, that's how we'll do most of the problems in the future. All right, I think there was one other question here. Yes, write the equation of the tangent line. So what is the equation of this line we drew in right here? Um, of y equals f of x at x equals 3, leave your equation in point-slope form. So we're always going to write our tangent line equations in point-slope form. So x1 and y1 are the values of this point right here. So x1 is 3, y1 is negative 3, and then m is the slope. That is the f prime of 3. So I'm going to write this out a little differently than they showed you up there, um, and then we'll plug all of our values in. So this is part D, right? So it's y minus f of 3 is equal to f prime of 3 times x minus 3. All right, so x equals 3 was our point of interest, so that's why the 3s are in there in every spot. This is the y value of the function at 3. This is the slope of the function at 3. So the y value is negative 3, y minus negative 3. The slope was 2. We found that three different ways, and x minus 3. And then just to clean this up, y plus 3 is equal to 2 times x minus 3. And you're going to leave it like that. You don't need to go to slope-intercept form. You don't need to distribute. Hey, we'll talk a lot about safe stopping places on the AP exam. You don't want to do more work than is necessary. In fact, if this is a question on the AP exam, I might have even suggested you leave your answer like this. You don't want to take any chances that you make a mistake and you lose a point. All right, that'll do it for this lesson. I hope you had fun learning about derivatives for the first time, uh, those of you who are new to calculus, and I will see you on the next one.